Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about find and replace in VBA. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of you probably know how to do find and replace in things like Word and Excel. But we're going to talk about some little differences with the VBA editor and how it handles find and replace and some extra little tricks for you. This is a developer level video, but we're not doing any programming. It's for developers who use the VBA editor a lot. Um, but if you want to become a developer, if you want to learn this stuff, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long, it teaches you everything you need to know to get started. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so let's say you change the name of a form. I'm not gonna actually change the name of a form. You could just rename it right here, right? But now we gotta go in our VBA code and we gotta find every instance of customer F and we gotta replace it with whatever the new name is. Now, a lot of the objects out here, queries and tables and all that, they're pretty good about recognizing that you renamed something. VBA, not quite so much. So you have to manually go through and check it all. Now you can do a find or you can do a find and replace. I'm very wary of doing global find and replaces, so be careful of that because you might run into weird unintended consequences. I'll show you one in a minute. So let's hit Control F, or it's of course under Edit Find. There's edit find and there's find and replace. So control F. All right, now one of my pet peeves with the find and replace box is it never stays where you want it to be. Even when you do like a find next, it, it jumps down. Why, why stay, stay right there. Stay, stay put. Say it doesn't want to stay put. So I'm gonna move my window down here. Let's see if this fixes it. Let's do this. All right, anyways, let me see if I can bring this down. Okay, stay put. You're gonna sit, you're gonna sit. Okay, good. All right, now, usually when you have something selected like that and you hit Control F, it's going to put that, ooh, see, oh, I can't stand you. It's gonna put what you had selected in the find what, okay? But you can easily just change that and if you drop this down, you'll see the last couple things you had in here, like Customer F, and then you hit Find Next. Okay. See, what's it, what are you doing? All right, now, there's different search ranges down here, all right? Selected text means I'm only going to search inside of whatever text you have selected. So if I do it now, it's gonna find, okay, search text is not found. It's not, it doesn't find a customer F anywhere in that text. Let me just double check it. Yeah, I don't see any either. Okay. Now, current procedure means a subroutine or a function, one procedure. That is one procedure. A procedure is a, a, is a, a general blanket term for either a sub or a function, okay? I use the terms interchangeably myself. I know technically subs don't return a value and functions do, I always never remember to call them procedures. I, I usually just call them functions because in C, they're all functions. Anyways, so that's what current procedure does. So if you got a really long procedure, if you got a really long, uh, you know, module, let's say, I don't, think, I don't think I have anything really big in this database. But let's say you got something here that's 500 characters long and you want to search within that, you use current procedure, okay? Current module is whatever module you have open right now in the VBA editor. Right now, I've got global mod open. All right, if I close this and go back to here, I'm in main menus, form module, and it will only search in here. That's the default. If you have to search the entire database, you pick current project, okay? That is view project explorer. That is this. This is the current project. It's all of the forms, all of the reports, modules, right? And any system modules, any global modules you got down here. So that'll search the whole database. Okay, so let's say I'm looking for customer F, all right? Control F, jumped up here again, and then I'll hit current project, right? And then I'll go, oh, let me, real quick, direction, there's all up and down. I've never used up and down. Up goes up, down goes down. I just leave it on all. It just starts from the beginning and runs through. Um, all right, so I'll hit find next, and it found that one. Okay, let's hit find next again. And okay, see that right there is why you have to be careful to, especially when you're doing a global find and replace, which we'll talk about replace in a second. But notice, that's not what you're looking for. Okay, so you gotta be careful. It's that is what you're looking for. Now, this is what find whole world, whole world, you wanna find the whole world? Find whole word only does. All right, this says it's gotta be just that word. So if I hit find next, it finds that, finds that. It will not find anything that this is part of, like, that other guy, where are you? That thing, okay? All right, 
Um, turn that off for a second. Match case is exactly what it says. Uh, it's case sensitive, upper lower case. And use pattern matching, which I just turned off. Usually this is off. I just I had it on because I was playing with it earlier. Pattern matching allows you to search for wild cards. You know what the wild card characters are. If not, I got a video on wild cards. Uh, I'll put a link to it down below. Basically, if I did something like this, cust star F, okay, it will find stuff that looks like that. Let's see if it finds any other ones. Let's see. Might not be. Let's do a C star F. How about that? C. Come here. C star F. So it'll find any word that starts with C and ends with an F. See right there. C and an F. C and an F. See? Okay. C and an F. And you can do find whole word to find just things that end in a whole word. That's C to F. All right. So you can mix and match all these things. Okay. But you're with me so far? Pretty straightforward stuff. This gets a lot of beginners. This whole thing here, like knowing this will search the entire database. This just searches the module that you're in. Okay. When we get to replace, which by the way, replace is control H. And if you can't remember the shortcuts, they're right on here for you. All right. Control F. I, control H took me a few years to remember that. And I still never remember F3 for find next. I never, I, I never really use it. I just opened up control H for replace. And there it is. All right. Now you got replace and you got replace all used with connection. Uh, with find next and you can do all the things you want to I recommend let's say let's say for example you want to replace all your customer F's with new customer F so there's customer F there you come down here you go new customer F search in the project find whole world whole I keep <laughs> say it 10 times fast people whole word find whole word find whole word only find whole word only. I see I can't I still can't do it anyways this is where, for something like this, I would definitely step through them. So I'm going to go find next. That'll find the next one. All right. Now I'm just going to hit replace, and that will replace this one and move to the next one. All right. Replace. See, and that's it. There's just a couple of them. Okay. And now when you realize you goofed, we're going to go back to new customer F and replace that with just customer F. Because I don't want to break my database. So find the next one. Okay. Replace. Replace. All right. Now, when is replace all useful? Well, when you know that exactly what you're placing is going to be the same thing everywhere. For example, every year I change my copyright notice. This should appear at the top of every one of my modules. Okay? I don't want to just do 2023 and then do find and replace because that could be in the code somewhere else, right? It could be a number somewhere or a dollar amount. But if I take this whole thing like that, Right? I'm going to copy that. I'll put that in here. I'll also put it in the replace with, and now I'll just simply change that to 2024. I'm pretty certain that that's not going to appear anywhere else except up top here. Okay? And we'll turn off find whole world. <laughs> all right? Current project. I'll hit replace all. Bunk, and it made 13 replacements, which, as you can see, are needed because I haven't updated it for this year yet. It's currently March of 2024. But that's the only time I would ever use that, is if it's something like this where it's a string of text we know it's not going to be anywhere accidentally in the code. If you're not sure, step through it. Okay? Now, this brings up a topic that one of our moderators, Sammy, posted in the forums on my website, is that he wants to be able to insert a comment line on top of every code block with a copyright statement, like I have in mine. Right? this thing up here. If you don't have this and you want to put one at the top of every module, how would you do that? Well, assuming that you have option compare database at the top of every one of your modules, which you should, it's a default setting. Okay. You could do a find and replace to replace this with this whole thing. In other words, adding that to the top of it. The problem is this does not allow a multi-line find and replace. So you can't do it with the built-in find and replace block tool. How can you do it? Well, we will cover that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download my databases that I build in these videos. And you have access to the code vault where this can be found. Yeah, it's a lot more than that. There's, there's a bunch of it. Um, and we'll go over this in the extended cut. You can basically take any two bits of text and replace them, whether there's multiple lines in it or whatever. doesn't matter. I built some code that, uh, that does the job. 
So check it out. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I'll see you in the extended cut. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. 
And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.